Good evening. I'm so happy to be able to be with you to, tonight as we look at uh, John chapter 10 a little more, and we're going to look at just a few verses uh, tonight when we are talking about where Jesus is, is speaking and, and talking to them. We are talking about Jesus, the, the shepherd, uh, how he is the shepherd, and, and we as Christians are his sheep. Uh, we can look, if you would, at uh, start at chapter 10, verse 11. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not of the, of, the, of the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, seeks, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the flock catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling, the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. Jesus is trying to point out that he cares about his sheep. Not only that, we have already looked last week and the sheep knows him. And he knows his sheep. This is important because we need to, we need to, <laughs> does it make sense? We need to know Jesus. We need to know Jesus. Uh, basically for Jesus to know us. In verse 14 he says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what he said. I'm going to lay down. He said, he didn't say I would, but he said I will. He was going, he knew he was going to lay down his life for the sheep. And he, verse 16, and he says, another sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. It says, and I will hear their voice, and theirs will be, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. He said, what? There are others, sheep, that are not of, he said, not of this fold. This, uh, this is hard for some people to understand. I uh, just listened to a great lesson by Brother Kelly where he was teaching a, a lesson about basically the how we must be strong in the church and, and a great lesson. But I also see one thing in this is that there are people today that does not or somehow cannot understand there is one fold. There's one shepherd. There is one flock. To the Jewish people of this day, they, they had different sects that was following different rabbis and different ones, but they all agreed on one thing. They said, we are God's people. And they said they was God's people because they was descendants from Abraham. And thus they was God's people. Uh, they was God's people because they worshipped in Jerusalem because they had the, the books of the Old Testament. They believed because of this they was God's people. There were some other people that did not that did also believe in God. We we know as them as the Samaritans. John chapter four. We go back a little bit and think about what happened there where Jesus when he uh, was leaving and going back or leaving Jerusalem and Judea going back to Galilee uh, it says there the beginning of that chapter says and Jesus said he must go through us Samaria well first of all he didn't that must go us was not something that he physically had to do most Jews when they went from there they would go across the Jordan River didn't go up the other side so they wouldn't have to go through Samaria. They did not like Samaritans. 
they they counted them as as dogs. That's what they would so oftentimes refer to them as. But he needed to go that way. Why did he go that way? He went that way so that he could talk and, and, and talk to the Samaritans. Those that did not believe in the Old Testament, other than the first five books, that's all they believed in, the first of books of Moses. But he went and he met, he talked, and he, and he talked to, to that woman and talk to those people there. And, you know, I think the, the great things was is, is what he said. When he talked to them and said, Jesus and the answer said, you know, if you know all the gift of God and what it is uh, that you ask for, you would say, give me, you know, give me, give me the water, the living water. She, he tried to convince her of what was happening. And we can see that they said to him, well, we know that we worship, we worship here. But you worship, the Jews says you worship in Jerusalem. But he said that our year is coming, the time is coming, that everybody will worship. That we will, all of us will worship basically in the, in the same place. Jesus said, said, woman, verse 21, woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you was neither neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. Your worship, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming. Notice he said, but the hour is coming. And now it is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. And God is a spirit. And those that worship God must worship God in spirit and truth. There was many there in, in that Samaria that believed in Jesus. Jesus said the hour is coming. What? Well, one reason the hour was coming was because they understood one thing about Jesus Christ. They understood, or were beginning to understand, I should say, that Jesus was coming for all nations. A lot of people believe that all nations of the earth should help and almost worship the seed of Abraham. Uh, I know people that basically think anybody is Jews, we have to make sure we help them because they are God's people. Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I don't think the Jews are God's people. Some of you may stop listening right then. <laughs> no. Some people think that they are God's people. Uh, well, I don't think the Jews are God's people anymore. I think they was given for a purpose to bring the world will bring Christ to the world, the Savior. Uh, I don't believe a, I don't believe a communist is God's people. Matter of fact, I, I believe that most of the world are not in the kingdom of God. But I do believe this: all the world. Every creature, every nation, every person can be in the kingdom of God. And that's what is important. We can see that, uh, I'd like to look at Matthew 21 and 43. Where there Jesus talked to the Jews, the Jews very proud, saying, hey, we are God's people. That's kind of funny. Some of them, the Samaritans didn't even believe, uh, some of some of them did not, the Sadducees did not even believe in angels or spirits, but they believed that they was God's people. They didn't even believe part of the scriptures. But because of their blood, they thought they was God's people. But Jesus said that, this Matthew 21, 43, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruit of it. What? The kingdom will be taken from the Jews and given to another. Now, 
Some have said, well, you mean the Jews are, are going to go to hell? No, no more than anybody else. Because the gospel was going to be preached in Jerusalem, beginning in Jerusalem, and then it was going to preach to all people. The gospel was going to be preached to them. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. In Ephesians chapter 2 and, and, and verse 11 where Paul is talking to the Gentile because <sighs> prejudice is not an American commodity. <laughs> Sometimes we think it is. Prejudice has been in, in, in every continent, in every society. It was in the world of the day of of the Roman Empire, of the Greeks, and everybody else. The Greeks thought they were smarter than anybody else. The, the Romans thought they was the best engineers in the world. Some countries thought they was the best warriors, the best archers, the best, and everything like that. And, and, and back and forth, you know, they, they believed that they was better. That's human nature. But we can see that the Greeks... The Gentiles, when they became Christian, they looked at the Jews and some didn't like them. My grandfather fought in a war where people was going to try to kill somebody because they was Jews. And there was also people killed there because they was gypsies. Uh, they, they had a list of three different nationalities of people the Nazis did that they thought should be wiped out of the earth. And then they had some that was just should be this and this and this and this. And um, that's not right. Well, look at the book of Ephesians there, chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Paul said this, Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles of the flesh, you are called uncircumcised by that which is called the circumcised made in the flesh by hand that at the time you was without Christ, being alien from the commonwealth of Israel and stranger from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. How did we today know about God? How does mankind know about God? Know about God because of the Old Testament that was given through Abraham descended to Jews. Amen. I'm thankful for that. We all should be. But then in verse 13, he says, But now in Christ Jesus, you who once was a full off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The Gentiles are brought near by the blood of Christ. And I asked you to go back to Acts 2 and read the gospel sermon that Peter preached. And he's he even there in that first sermon, he says, And to those of you and those that are a full off. And now we see who the full off is. The full off was the Gentile. That first sermon said Jerusalem, Israel, all your children, and then also those that are full off. In verse 14, he says, For he himself is our peace, who have made both. Now notice this. He is our peace. Who is it? He is our. That is Jew, Gentile. Black, white, Indian, don't matter. For he himself is our peace, who had made both one and broken down the middle wall of petition, petition, having abolished the enmity of the flesh, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. He took the two the, the Jew, the Gentiles, and the Gentiles was the Eskimos, the blonde-headed people from the north. It was the people from the black, the Chinese. All the Gentiles meant non-Jewish. He take all the both and made of one, made us one today. This is what he was talking about even here. He was talking about those or those outside of my fold. He was saying that he, Jesus didn't die for the Jews only. 
Jesus died for the world. He died for everybody. One old black gospel preacher that died just shortly before I became a Christian. They used to make the argument in Matthew says what Jesus said, you know, that referred to that it was going to all the nations and he that believe it is baptized. Or, you know, going in to all. But then Mark says, go in into every creature, preach the gospel to every creature. And he used to say, well, back in the day when there wasn't a black nation that had freedom in Africa, he would say, well, you know, the thing about it is, everybody, he says, to all creatures, meaning every creation, man, no matter where they are, we need to talk to them. If it's the seven foot tall man in Africa, if it's the, if it's the cannibals in South America, some people say, why do you mean? No, we have to talk to all men, no matter who they are, and we need to know that. Because, you know, Jesus came to the seed of Abraham, or the Jew, but he came to save all men. He can be your shepherd. He called the Jews. The shepherd called. When they, they opened up the paddock, the, the sheep, where they was, at, the shepherd would go and holler. And then he would go towards the pasture, the home pasture, whatever it was. He would go. Did he beat the sheep, say, come? No. He led the sheep. And they was, and, and many times, the shepherd would sing. They would make a noise. Why? Because the sheep knew the voice of their shepherd. The sheep only got lost if they stopped paying attention to what? The voice of their shepherd. Brethren, friends, I pray that you and I can help one another. I pray that we can listen to the voice of the shepherd and we can follow him realize that he died for us so no matter who we are of jewish descent african descent native american consent chinese or whatever it is we can all be one if you want to see it and condense and see this I, I plead with you to read the book of colossians that's your homework Read the book of Colossians and you will see all that I said kind of in one book about the unity that we have in the body of Christ. God be with you till we meet.